Hi guys, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts and I'm so excited. I'm at the Pet Quarter Shop Studio and we're taping videos for our Pillow Talk book. I am so looking forward to talk to you about paper piecing. Oh, it's so much fun. You get such an accurate re results, but sometimes you want to have a little pillow talk about that technique. The pillow that we're going to work on is this one right here. It is so colorful. I chose shades of purples and a little bit of blues and a little bit honey. I love adding that warm feel to this pillow. And of course, those lights just glow into it. Directions for cutting you will find in the book and you can cut your own fabrics or you can purchase one of our the glass prism glass pillow kits that we have it prepared for you. In the kit, you will have enough fabric to make a pillow the top of it and it's all the fabric is prepared that you're going to use the foundation piecing um, uh, the paper piecing technique we also have the paper piecing paper there are sheets and you're going to have to cut the smaller sheets from those or you can go ahead and make copies from the book remember when you're making your own copies from the book check with the original one that the size is the right size. We also included one inch square on those pages so that way when you print and uh, copy and print you can put a ruler over and check that the one inch is indeed one inch. So nothing has changed in the copying process. But right now I'm going to show you how to make a one block and if you know how to make a one you can make a dozen. So I'm going to start with a paper. I cut the paper a little bit bigger than what it is uh, uh, intended to. Notice the straight line gives you the exact size of the paper. Why don't I cut it exactly on a line? Because after I'm done piecing, that's the line I'm going to use to trim my block to perfection. So you don't want to cut it right away. You want to have a little room and your fabric needs to cover all the way outside those straight lines. So I cut my paper and I'm going to grab my first fabric. It's a blue square, a rectangle. A rectangle. Now I'm going to take a paper, place it right over my rectangle. Yep, it covers all the way around. Perfect. My first step, I want to trim it to the size that I need to cover A1 right here, this area. So what I like to do is I collect old bookmarks, uh, sometimes maybe, oh, look at this, Pacific International Show, it's coming up. As quilters, we get a lot of them. I'm going to place this right down here, okay, next to the line. Notice what I'm doing. I'm placing right to the line. Why am I doing this? Because it's easier to crease the paper when you have something nice and stiff laying right next to it. That's a little trick that long time ago one of my friends taught me. Then I'm going to place a ruler right over and this is a quarter inch ruler. But I'm gonna step back. I already have done this few times so it's easy for me to do it. But I have a feeling that when you're going to do it things gonna start to move and shift. So I want to help you. You cannot put a pin here to hold things in place, but guess what? I can take uh, my handy glue, put a little tab, not a lot, just a little dot. And when I put my paper down, notice the difference. It's not going anywhere. So when I put this down and fold this right over, just like this, grab this ruler and this is a special ruler that it has a quarter inch lip. What that means is, look at that little bump right here. Yes, that is going to be wonderful because I can take this ruler, shift it towards the fold of the paper that I just did. Let me rotate this just a tiny bit towards me. Perfect. All oh, right, and I'm placing my ruler. We talk about this ruler, it's so nice. And I just put a fresh blade. Remember, get some fresh blades for yourself. And I nicely cut it. Look at this, oh, it works so wonderful. I am so happy. So we just made our first piece. I'm gonna take this away. 
and notice that that piece covers this area right here. The next step, I'm gonna grab a next strip, the right color that I need, and that strip I'm going to place right sides together with my other fabric that I already have back here, just like this, and the best is to center it up match it up and what I like to do is I lift it up and just check with the light yep can you see it do you see how you can see the fabric right through that paper if you cannot see it go next to your window or use a little glass a uh, little lamp um, maybe you have a light table so that way you can see it that those edges are covered or you can fold it back again and check yep everything is in the right places and I'm gonna stitch from A to B zoom 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 now I like to stitch exactly from this area straight down I don't go all the way because I want to have less bulk in my seam allowance as possible we're gonna be sewing multiple times into this so it's gonna get a little bulky and speaking of bulk and stitching, I want you to use your Macrotex Needle 80. Make sure you grab one of those. And I like you to use a, a cotton thread and make the stitches a little closer. If you still have a lot of bulk in your seams, change your cotton thread to maybe Dacobab a thread and that will work uh, really nice. It's a little thinner and it work uh, great. Wonderful has a wonderful thread for that. So once I finish stitching, look at this. I have one done for you. All right, let's see that. So what we did was sew it. We uh, have it right here. Now I will open it up. I take this, open all the way, finger press or grab one of those cute little tools and I shy away from ironing when I'm doing my paper piecing. Why? Because with the iron you're gonna definitely shine up those edges. So doing the finger press or using that cute little tool really works nice. Now again notice this, this fabric wants to bubble a little bit and roll it up so grabbing a little bit of a glue just tiny bit not a lot dab dab in the area that this fabric is supposed to cover that is gonna be great super notice how nice and flat is staying now and now it's gonna be time to match up my next piece so what i would do is grab my next fabric this is the fabric i'm gonna place it again right here match it and look at where the line is look at when the line is just like that and of course if you wanted to you could have grab um, your little card fold it back look at this fold it back grab your ruler place it right over okay rotary let's trim it that way it's going to be easier to match that next piece and what i'm going to do is place it right sides together right sides together open it and now stitch from here to here and in no time you will be able to open things up just like this open it up and you have your last last piece that you just place it right over now if whenever you finish when you're ready and i like to leave this to the last when i have all my blocks done completed for the whole pillow and it's just a little friendly reminder when you're doing each block they're gonna be all different color options they're gonna be to the left to the right in the book we give you direction exactly what you need to do how many you need but what i like to do is i do one mark it off another one mark it off another one mark it off and i keep going like this one block at a time no chain sewing for paper piecing for me simply because 
of flipping the fabric back and forth and sewing from the back, sometimes it gets a little confused. So I don't like to put too much on my plate. I just do one block at a time. I'm gonna place my ruler right over as soon as all my blocks are done. And with this ruler, I'm gonna go ahead and follow the straight line and just beautifully trim it all the way on the outside. I am so excited about this. This is gonna be just beautiful. And we have our first paper pieced block done. And I tell you, if you learn this technique, just by making the pillow, you're gonna wanna do all your blocks that way. It is very accurate. And notice the points, how sharp they are, how beautiful it looks. As soon as you finish, you will be sewing all your pieces blocks together once the pillow is complete that's what you tear the paper away you don't want to pull the paper now because sometimes during the pulling maybe some of the edges will stretch and you want it to leave it to last minute if there is a too much paper yes from just the transition area you can peel the paper away but what i like to do i leave the paper finish my whole pillow then tear the paper from the back and because we did put a nice needle in good thread and made our stitches a little bit tighter together everything should work wonderful for us and we're going to be ready set go and have another wonderful pillow i did a edge to edge quilting with a beautiful braid and a feather on this one there are three feathers on it to accent those little rows of glow of fabric. There is another pillow that I wanted to show you that uses that same technique. For this one, you will make your own paper. You will copy and paste it. Remember, the paper is in two pieces because it's a little larger, so you have to tape the paper together before you start stitching over. Or maybe you have that option that you have a nice big printer and it will print a larger size for you. But this one is another fun one. We're gonna start up with the centerpiece, sew it, sew it, sew it, sew it, and use the paper as a paper piece, or you can do it as a foundation piece. And what that means, you place the paper in the bottom and sew on the top next to those beautiful straight lines. So right there, this one will be a fun one to learn. Start with one block. If you can make a one, you can make a dozen. Don't forget to subscribe to Fat Quarter Shop YouTube channel, as well as visit the box in the bottom of the YouTube uh, of the uh, video for all the information on any of the, of the products that we included in this video. I hope you enjoy it. I can't wait to see your pillows and have some pillow talk with you. Happy quilting.